one. Hi everyone and welcome to the video on section 5.9 approximate integration. In this video we're going to be taking a break from all of the different techniques we had for uh, perfectly solving integrals. And In this section what we're going to do is we're going to move instead into approximating them. So this is going to be very similar to how we actually started thinking about integrals, how we defined them in the beginning. And you saw a lot of the same pictures you're going to see here where we're looking at rectangles and we're trying to kind of guess at the value of an integral by thinking of it as area under the curve and adding up these rectangle areas. So it's going to be very similar to that, like you've already done before. But what we're going to do is we're going to review a few different methods for this. We're going to see when some are better than others, compare them a little bit, um, and just so you can kind of get a feel for this. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to go through and do an example. So the example that we're going to do is with the function f of x equals e to the 1 over x. So this is one of the integrals, right? the integral of this, that we can't actually do. So if we go into Mathematica, define it, it looks like we can do it, except for to us, this does not make any sense, right? We do not have the tools to understand what's happening here. Um, it's basically saying it's an integral still, and so this is not helpful for us. Um, and then when we go here and do a definite integral, again, we're getting these functions that we cannot handle. The gamma function is not something we're going to talk about in this class. So. It's just not something that is within the realm of what we know to use. So if we had, for some reason, this integral, or just this one with no bounds, that, and we wanted to actually try to figure something out about it, um, we would have to use this approximation idea. Okay, so here is a graph of f of x. That's e to the 1 over x. And so looking at this picture, it seems like we should be able to do a definite integral and we should be able to think about it in terms of some kind of area. So, you know, before what we had was we had something like 1 going up here to 5. That was that integral that we were looking at before, 1 to 5 of f of x dx. So it seems like, you know, there's an area here I can shade in, and so I should be able to find that out. But again, using the tools that we have to do antiderivatives, we can't actually do that with this function. So we're going to try to approximate this. All right, so again, it looks like we, can, we should be able to find some value for this, but we, we don't have the tools for it yet. Okay, so again, in Mathematica, this is shaded. I'm going to give you the Mathematica file if you want to learn how to do this. Uh, it's not too bad, so you can check it out if you want to play around with this. All right, so there's three things that we have to remember here from when we first kind of did some of this approximation, right? There were three ways we could do this. There was using left endpoints, and I'll, I'll draw some pictures on this graph so we can play around with them a little bit. There was using, actually, let's change the color up here. There was right endpoints, okay, and then there was using midpoints. And so if this is super rusty, you might be like, what points am I talking about? But I'll get there in a second, so midpoints. All right, so remember, how we did approximation before was we said, mm, I bet if I choose enough rectangles, I can just fit some rectangles in here and take the area of those rectangles and that'll probably be pretty good. I won't maybe no won't be perfect, but it'll be pretty good. And I, you know, I could do this and it, I could do not a great job, right? So let's stick with the left endpoints. So I could take my left endpoint at 1 here and then decide, you know what? I'm going to split this into two rectangles. Okay? So here here's one rectangle and then I could do it again, and then the second rectangle, left endpoint, right? So rectangle two, left endpoint, would be here. And you might be like, that's terrible. Look at all this extra space here, this extra area that I would get if I tried to add these two up. Bad job. So, okay, good point. 
So what could we do to make this better? Remember, just if I choose more rectangles, I end up getting a better approximation. And so how does that work? Well, let's just say I still wanted to stick with left endpoints, but I wanted instead of only two rectangles to cover this one through five, let's say I wanted to you know, cut that in half, so or I guess double that instead. So how about instead of going one, two here as my width, I could only go one. Okay, so that you know that's gonna change it up a little bit. So let's erase these two. And again, left endpoint means when you go to draw your rectangle, you start with your leftmost endpoint of that rectangle on the function. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go, okay, two, you're gonna go all the way up here. So again, it's not perfect, I'm still overestimating, but what you're gonna see is, for the second one, stop at the function, left endpoint. You know, it's not that, it's not quite as bad. So this isn't too bad, I, I still am overdoing it by quite a bit, but you know, it's not awful. Left endpoint and left endpoint. Okay, so these are left endpoints. So, okay, I'm overdoing it still. All right. Well, what about right endpoints? Let's just stick with the same delta. So here in this example, delta x is 1 because that's the distance here. Each rectangle has a width of 1. So that's my delta. This is a reminder of how that works. Okay, so how does right endpoint work? Right endpoint works by, okay, if I'm 1 to 2, start my, my rectangle at the right endpoint. So that would be that rectangle. Okay. All right, so then, uh, okay, do the next one, two to three. Again, my rectangle is going to be here at the base, but I start it at the right. Okay. Do, 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 do. So that's my second one. And then again here, I start it at the right. Do, 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 do. Okay. And then here, I start it at the right. Do, 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 do. Okay, so what happened with the right endpoints here? This doesn't look too bad, right? But I'm missing out on some of the shaded area. Like right this area right here, I missed that. I missed that. I missed this one. I missed this one. So it just happens in this case that this is going to be an underestimate in this case. Okay. And the left endpoints, if you look at the red boxes here, right, those are going to be overestimates. Okay. All right. Uh, and then midpoints, well, what's going to happen with midpoints? So midpoints, the way the midpoint will work, uh, and I'm going to just clear these out so it doesn't get too cluttered. So the, what the midpoints will do is, well, actually, I think I can do it. It's not too bad. Is, okay, I still want delta x to be 1 here. All right, so one to two is where my rectangle is going to sit. Nothing's changing about that. But the height, what I'll do is I'm going to start the height at the midpoint, 1.5 here for my rectangle. That'll be my rectangle coming down here. So you see with this rectangle, it's like, okay, well, you know, I missed out some of the area here, but I kind of made up for some of that over here. So it's a balance between the red left endpoints overestimate and it's balancing the right endpoints underestimate. So the midpoint is trying to say, okay, if the left is over and the right is under, let me just go in the middle. That's, that's its goal, okay? And so midpoint again, here would be the midpoint, the midpoint, and the midpoint, all right? So I'll put those down here too. Boom, 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 okay. All right, so that's midpoints. In this, in this case, this is kind of a mix of them. It's a little hard to tell what will happen in each specific scenario if I'm over or underestimating. We could use Mathematica to explore that, but in this case, it's a little bit tough to tell. It's, it's trying to balance these in, in one way. So okay, this, this is the three ways we've done this before. So how can we have something like Mathematica do this? Or how can we do it? Like, do we have a formula for this? Each example, of course, you could just sit down with the example, the integral, and try to kind of figure things out. But what's often helpful is having a, um, 
just kind of a formula, a way to think about this right off the bat. So that's what we're doing here in Mathematica. And, you know, I may ask you to use something like this, uh, and, and I'm going to ask you to think through something else with the right endpoints with this video in just a second. But, you know, again, I get that this is, you know, this is a little bit tough if you haven't done too much coding to really see through this. So you know, if you have trouble with that, that's okay. But it's, it's useful to really think about. So we'll do it just kind of out by hand math-wise, and then we'll see if we can make the connection here. So what we've done is we've created a function to calculate this LHS, which is um, the left endpoints, uh, based on the limits of integration and the number of subintervals. So what you got to remember the way this worked was if I have the integral from 1 to 5 f of x dx, what do I need, right? So I need to know n equals the number of rectangles which is the same as the number of subintervals. So the 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5. That's the subintervals. And then I need to know the limits of integration too. So often you'll hear those as a and b. So a and b, which are the limits of integration. So, you know, what are you going to integrate to? 1 to 5 in this case. Okay. So then all right, how do I figure out everything else I need? Well, there's a couple things I can figure out here. So delta x is b minus a over n, which is, what is that saying? It's just saying I want to go from 1 to 5, so that's 5 minus 1. That tells me the, the, the actual distance from 1 to 5, okay? And then n is the number of rectangles. Well, I'm trying to split that up. I'm saying, okay, there's 4 distance from 1 to 5, right? There's a four total distance. Okay, how many rectangles do I want? How many times do I want to split that up? The first time I did this, I split it up, n was two. Remember, the first crack at this I took, I drew two big rectangles and I did a bad job. n would be two there. In this case, how many do I have? One, two, three, four. So in our case, a is one, b is five, n is four. So then delta x would be 5 minus 1 over 4, which is 1. And so that's why each of these has a, a rectangle with width 1, because it's 5 minus 1 over 4. Okay, so you got to figure that out. Now, I'm not explicitly doing that in Mathematica. You'll notice here, I actually just write that in code. I say Mathematica, you got to use delta x, because I'm adding the widths of the rectangles, right? That's what I need to add up, the width of the rectangles as a piece. So, okay, you go do that. Awesome. So then what else is in this formula? That's delta x. The other thing is, well, what did we do? We used the width here, then we also had to figure out, I need to get the height of my rectangle. But that's gonna depend on where the function is. So here for the right endpoint in this one, but it was down here for the right endpoint in this next rectangle and and somehow I gotta figure out how far up to go for these rectangles and so it's just where the function is and it's all about what I plug in so for example here it was f of 2 that's right here so let's write that out so you so as I'm saying it, you can see it so this point here was f of 2 this point was f of 3 this point was f of 4 and that point was f of 5. Okay, so it was for the right endpoints. For the left endpoints, which ones did I use for the left? Let's just count them all up. I used for the left f of 1. I used this one too, right? I know that this is uh, a little bit weird but I because they're doubling up. But I also used f of 2. And I also used f of 3. I also used f of 4, but I stopped. I didn't use f of 5, right? This last rectangle was built from f4. This rectangle was built from f3. This was built from f2. This was built from f1. So hopefully you notice this kind of little tricky thing here. Left endpoints, what am I going to use? 1, 2, 3, 4. Right endpoints, what am I going to use? 2, 3, 4, 5. 
So that's where this can get a little bit tricky because we need to tell Mathematica, hey Mathematica, you got to use different endpoints depending on what you're doing here. So that's what really the rest of this chunk is, is trying to tell Mathematica where the endpoints are. Like, how do I do the endpoints? And it, it's broken down into a couple different things. So how do I know what endpoints to go? Well, I'm probably going to use A, my start point, right? That's, that's clearly something I'm going to use. B, because i got to tell Mathematica somehow where to end. N, because that's going to determine which points I use too, because of the width and how many I have. Um, and then there's this extra piece here, I, which might be the thing that's that that's the weirdest part of all of this if you've never done much summations, summation work before. But I is is kind of like counting your steps. So in this case, I'm starting I equals one. So that's my first step. And then I would go to two in this sum. That's my second step, my third step, my fourth step, and I keeps going up. Okay, so what is happening here? It's saying when i equals 1, because that's where we're going to start. So let's just kind of try to see if we can run through this real quick. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit more on just this piece. So, okay. So when i equals 1, what happens? This is f of a plus, okay, 1 minus 1 times this b minus a over n. So let's just talk about what's in this f piece here. Now, I know this may look confusing, but you're doing this in your brain, I promise you, when you're doing the left endpoints. Let's just double check that that's happening, because I know it is. I say left endpoints. What's the first thing you do? You say, okay, left endpoints. Start at 1. So you're taking a, okay, and then left. Oh, I just stay here. I don't go anywhere. That's what this is. So let me rewrite the next one. f of my my initial bound plus 0 times b minus a over n. So what this b minus a over n is, all that's doing is telling you how far you have to go if you're going to move. But you know, because this is the first point we're plugging in, that no, left endpoints, I don't have to go anywhere, just a. Just plug in a. Right? I'll just plug 1 in in this case, because it's a left endpoint. Now, how would this switch with the right endpoints? What's the first endpoint, or what's the first um, x value we plug in for the green boxes? It was 2, right? So if I'm going to redo this for the right endpoints, I somehow have to change this so that if I plug in 1, it's going to go a plus this step, this width of the rectangle, right? Because that's what you did. When you did the right endpoints in your head while we were going through this, you went, okay, right endpoint. So I'm at one here. Nope, I got to take a, a rectangle width step over here. Okay, then plug in F2. You see, so you did it in your head. We are trying to tell Mathematica how to do it because it's not, it's not intuitively smart like you are with this. It needs like full out instructions. So when you say, oh, just go to the beginning and then for the right endpoints, you know, just go to the right each time. It doesn't know what that means. You have to tell it. What do you mean go to the right? Oh, take this step that we defined here, this delta x, the width of a rectangle. Just go a step. Okay, now what do I do? Oh, well, just go another step. That's what this i is doing. And then Mathematica each time will know to keep adding by this amount as we go. So, again, tough. But if, if you really want to get a feel for how some of this stuff works, Try really digging into these formulas. You don't have to do it in Mathematica. Try make, you know, writing them up and seeing if they match the way you kind of almost do this in your head as you go through. All right. So with that thought, thought through and done, we can get the picture. Bye bye. There we go. So we have got a picture here. And in this case, we have to stop and think about this because this doesn't look like what we were talking about exactly. What did they do here? Well, A was 1, B was 5, okay, that's fine, N was 8. So actually when this was plugged in, there were 8 total rectangles. So 
1 to 2, that was my previous rectangle width of 1. Now I'm breaking it up into two of these. So 1 to a half, 2, 2 and a half, 3, 3 and a half, 4, 4 and a half, 5. So then the endpoints I used are 1, 1 and a half, 2, 2 and a half, 3, 3 and a half, right? 4, I used 4 and a half, and then I'm done because I used left endpoints. I would stop and not use that one. So, okay, there you go. That's a nice picture. I'm overdoing it like we saw before. The left endpoints were overdoing it, but still not too bad. Then what you can do is you can go through and you can kind of check out what happens as you increase n because what you'll notice is the only power we have in this if we're saying we're going to use left endpoints is the more rectangles the better is kind of what we can do okay so what you can do is you can start kind of seeing how we're doing here or what we're approaching you can try thinking about this we're getting smaller each time why are we getting smaller each time think about that what happened at the beginning we were overdoing it like crazy each time I shrink the rectangles, that amount that I'm overestimating is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So based on these pictures, you would expect as n gets larger and larger and larger, more and more and more rectangles, my approximation gets closer and closer and closer to the right number. All right. So this is something, you know, this is not something you have to do right now. I'm not telling you to, but at this point, if you're like, yeah, I really got that in here like this this feels good I, I think uh, I get this go make a RHS Def you can copy and paste this code from the Mathematica file into your own or just stay in the one I give you and play switch up this in here so that it will do the right endpoints and see what happens okay and I'm happy to help you with this okay so you could play around with this, keep going, keep going, but there's another rule we can talk about called the trapezoidal rule. So there's two ways to think about this. There's a simple way and then there's the, like the geometric way, which is less simple. The geometric way is I don't need to use rectangles because we every time we use a rectangle, what happens? We get this like jut out here and it's like, oh, this stupid jut or jut in here it makes me mess everything up right endpoint left endpoint whatever I'm doing right so if I was to draw these two rectangles right endpoint this is the right endpoint and then this big one here is the left endpoint I'm doing a terrible job but what you'll notice is that if I use a trapezoid which has this sloped slanted top piece to it not a horizontal one then I might be able to do a better job actually kind of you know contouring to these curves right so this sloped top might fit curves better and so we end up seeing that happening now you could go through and do some geometry to figure out using this like okay uh, you know what's the area that's gonna be well I still have the width and then the height well if I use left end points you know, I got to kind of figure out what the height of this triangle is, or I've got to use a formula for a trapezoid. There's a simpler way. The trapezoid method actually ends up being the same thing as averaging the left and right endpoint method, which is kind of cool. So, this is something uh, that is just a neat thing if you want to play with. See if you can you can figure that out. See if you can show that this is true. So this is kind of a neat thing, much more than I would ask you to do on any kind of quiz or test. But it's cool. Just see if you can figure this out. Why? Why is this true? Okay. Draw a couple left, right endpoint trapezoid points and see if you can try to kind of figure out um, why. And, and basically, if you're, you're really kind of looking for it, this picture, I think, will help you. So here I drew a left endpoint a right end point and then there's the trapezoidal rule so use this think about how this one underestimated this one overestimated and even though my picture is really bad hopefully you can kind of see the shape you get here and the way it fits into this picture so check that out it's interesting but trapezoidal rule is just do the left do the right average them not too bad okay 
So, you know, you can go through and you can keep trying to play around with this and do more and do more um, and, and see what happens. And you can try different functions if you want and play around. Now, you know, what's the kind of like, because you might at this point be like, well, you know, we didn't do anything. Well, yeah, true. We did some stuff, but, you know, we didn't do anything in like the normal sense that you're used to with the examples, things like that. So, in general, what you should practice when you're going through the homework is doing these types of problems, okay, by hand. You know, small ends. So, a problem that could be given to you is, so here, let me go down and, and I'll put it here so it makes sense chronologically in the video. Uh, okay, so what, you know, what's like a typical problem? So, a typical problem looks like this. I give you some function. I give you n, I give you a, I give you b. I say use blank rule. So that could be trapezoidal, that could be left, right, midpoints, whatever. And um, do it. Plug it in. So plug in the, figure out what delta x is, figure out what points you have to, x values you have to plug in, and then you know, put it into the formula and solve. That's what these problems all look like. So practice that. But the super neat thing is we've got this Mathematica power now where, you know, if you go through here, define this RHS, you've already got this one and this one. If you, if you can define this one, you've got like an immediate check for yourself on these. So that's an, an extra reason to give that a shot. Uh, but that's what these problems look like, just like we did above go through, figure out what x values to plug in. So we did one example above, but that's what they all pretty much look like. All right. Now, there's one other method that is really cool, not something I would ask you to do um, on a quiz or a test, uh, but it's called Simpson's Rule. So Simpson's Rule uses parabolas instead of straight lines to approximate the curve. Uh, the formula looks like this, so it's similar in some ways, right? Like I have a delta x for the width, and then I'm adding up right these things where I plug in x values into the function. Now, what's weird though is that there's some numbers here uh, that hmm, they're, they're, you might look at this and be like, "What's up with the twos and the fours?" And it looks like they're alternating. The book does a nice job kind of going through and showing you how to set that up. Totally unnecessary uh, for you to do, but still cool like if you want to look through it it's definitely understandable it'll take a little bit but it's definitely understandable to figure it out but basically the idea is you know you're trying to with that function that we had so let me go all the way back up here so with this function we had instead of using any specific polygon to try to fit into these points here that I might define and, and do that instead what you're doing is you're like wait this is a curve. It, you know, I could think of some crazy polygons or cut this up into very tiny pieces and like I guess that's going to be fine, right? Be but the tops of all my polygons are going to be straight lines and this is in essence not straight, right? It's not a straight line. So why am I using these kind of rigid straight line polygons to try to figure this out? Why not instead try to use another curve. So why not in some little area here, like maybe from like one to two, why not instead try to see if I can figure out some uh, polynomial, in this case a quadratic, that I can just take the quadratic and like, you know, go like this, fit somehow a quadratic here. And it maybe isn't perfect, but you know, you got some quadratic here that over this range, if I take the integral of that, and well, we're not actually taking the integral here, but it's the same idea. If I take the area under that, it'll be really close. So it's like in, you're, you're trying to do this fitting idea, which is actually a very important idea that that's why it's so cool that Simpsons is Simpsons rules here to give you an idea about it. But instead of using straight lines, which in like, well, by kind of definition of this, never perfectly fit, 
why don't we use curves to try to help us learn about curves? Doesn't that make sense? That's what Simpson's rule is all about. So it's taking in the function values at specific x values that, again, you figure out just like we had done before, and it uses those to try to fit a parabola to it. So it's cool. The code's here if you're interested in it, um, but it's really, really good. That's, that's basically what you have to do. Uh, it only takes n going to 100 to estimate um, the example above to the fourth decimal place, which is really good. And so the last thing I'll say about this is, you know, for those who are interested, you might say like, okay, well, but left end points, let me just make n really big and who cares about these others? And so that's a fair question. The problem with that though is as you get more complicated functions or larger ranges or things like that, uh, just, you know, jacking up n to like, well, let's just make n, you know, equal to a really big number and we'll use only the left endpoints and I'm happy now. Woo! Well, the problem is we're asking a computer to do this. It's got to do computations. And if you get too complicated with the computations, this could be a big problem. We can't just make n whatever big number we want and be like, yeah, the computer's fine. They're fast. Come on. You know, that's true, they're fast, but this gets the idea in our head that when we are using a computer to help us do calculations, it's often very good to be thinking, wait, can I think of the right method for this problem to solve it? Can I think about the most efficient way to do this? Because when you get to certain problems, maybe you have to do a calculation like this every half of a second you know, every half second, you got to do this calculation, do this calculation, do this calculation, uh, because your program is, you know, flying a helicopter on Mars, and so it's got to be able to do these real-time calculations. If you just pick some, you know, very inefficient method to solve something like this, and say, ah, oh, the computer's fine, well, then you're going to crash your helicopter on Mars because it's not going to be able to do things fast enough. So. There's really this idea is, you know, important to be thinking about. Some things will develop, like the left, the right, the midpoint, they'll work. Yeah, sure. But we also always want to be thinking about all the ways we could do it, the best ways. So it's just a, a really cool section, got some cool ideas in it. Um, just try, practice some of these, make sure you're comfortable. Here's a function, left endpoints, right endpoints, what do I plug in? How do I plug into the actual formula to do this? Uh, but that's it to the section. It's really not too terrible.